Well, good morning, Crime Stuppers. It's the Butt Crackadon. <laughs> and I have moved, and everything's blue here. It's blue. Uh, this is going to be a really short video. I just, uh, uh, one, the birth certificate thing, whatever, that whole, the man is from top to bottom fake. It's a lie. People are figuring out now it's a lie. I'm going to make another long video about the fact that, you know, the surveillance and the uh, pre-Obama and the now-Obama, the guy that used to think, uh, you know, that said whatever the hell it was he needed to say to get elected, and the guy now, well, that surveillance ain't so bad. If you don't trust us, we got a problem. <laughs> I don't trust him. Neither do a lot of other people. Government spying on us like we're East Germans. Oh, my goodness. And people, I got friends who are like, I don't got a problem. I got nothing to hide. What's the problem? Anyway. If you are a 20-something uh, person of color, uh, one that has ancestry who were slaves, this would be a good book to buy. And the reason why I bring this up, or not buy, find. You gotta find it. You ain't buying this thing. This is ancient. I uh, dug this out of my books, uh, inherited from my mother. Uh, note this right here. See, that this was on the cover of a paperback book that was in bookstores all over the United States. Three Negro classics. They didn't call us blacks, right? It says the souls of black folk. Yeah, that's one of the stories. Up from slavery and, of course, uh, autobiography of an ex-colored man. Um, notice all three, right? Col colored, right? They don't... People that are having a slight identity crisis don't know what to call themselves, don't know what to be called by others. Can't call us niggers no more, though. Ooh, that's naughty. Don't, don't use that nigger word if you're white. You, 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 can't do, you, ain't got, you ain't got no nigger rights. Me, on the other hand, I've had people cross the fucking street to call me a nigger. <laughs> and I was watching. And I was watching. A, and see, it amuses me. This is just stupid, ignorant people. But I, I was watching this. Uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Hughley, uh, D.L. Hughley, or one of them guys. Uh, doing stand-up comedy, and he was talking about how, you know, they, they pull up in their car and with the window rolled down, and they say, nigger, and then they take off in their cars. But I've had that happen more than once, and not just in, like, in Idaho or, or uh, Montana, but, like, places like California, Nevada. Anyway, it's like, I don't know, it's like cow tipping for white folk to do that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this book, right, give you these three books. These three paperbacks. Actually, you can probably still get all three of these in print. You just won't be able to get it with the lovely Negro on the cover. Uh, perspective, my friends. Perspective. You're 20-something. Perspective. Right? I was born when my mom took me into the whites-only bathroom and got, you know, women spitting in her hair. Okay. We've come a long, long way. we got a long, long way to go. But see, in Hawaii, we've got 99 problems, but that ain't one, right? The whole thing about that cereal commercial where, you know, it's a, it's a multi-race family and they're getting in trouble for that. Well, they should be getting in trouble for the GMOs and the crap that's in the, and the metal shavings that's in the cereal. But the fact that in Hawaii, nobody, can, mom and dad are different races, that's pretty much expected here in Hawaii. You guys should spend some time over here. Because where you are, I guarantee you, you colorblind. <laughs> as soon as I hear that, when I was down south, as soon as I heard them say, "Oh, we're colorblind," the, my, the, you know, now I'm now I have to be on guard because I know they ain't colorblind. In Hawaii, we never say stuff like that because you know, black folk and white folk getting together, Hawaiians and and Howleys and and whoever it is, those are terms anyway. That's a slang term, white people and Hawaiians or Japanese and Koreans or what? I mean, name it. We, we're at the point where our hybrids are so far down where like people will have 14 different nationalities in this time because we just, we eat together, we sleep together, we live together. We live on islands and got time for, for being silly, right? The one thing I noticed on the mainland was, yeah, you're integrated, but if I walk into this bar, everybody's black. I walk into that bar, everybody's white. I walk into that bar, everybody's Korean. And the only place I was welcome was where everybody was black. But then as soon as they spent some time talking to me, they're like, you ain't black. <laughs> well, no, I grew up in Hawaii, kind of like Obama. Anyway, uh, the birth certificate, and then I'm done. Does his birth certificate say Negro on it? Mine does. Negro. That's what they used to call us back in the 60s. Negro. They weren't, they weren't no enlightened people. Here in Hawaii, people were like, well, they were a little more enlightened in Hawaii. They used the term black. Nonsense. They're, that was ju they just had gotten rid of, and, and, and in fact, I'm not sure if in 19, 
and uh, when he was born in what is it 1961 or 60 whatever it was he uh we had still still had white only beaches in hawaii right there was still <laughs> people like to think forget about that but i'm pretty sure they've gotten rid of it by then but if you look there, you can find signs in front of the royal hawaiian hotel white only beaches right here in Hawaii. Don't even kid yourselves that Hawaii was more enlightened than the rest of the states. And who were the doctors in our state back then? Right, right, right. who were, and to this, well, that's not true, but when I was growing up, but definitely uh, in the early 60s, most of the doctors, most of the quote unquote intelligentsia were, were the Haoles, were the white people, right? And then slowly but surely, the Japanese and Filipinos and so forth, the, the plantation workers, started getting into teaching, started getting into politics and government and so forth. And now we have, you know, the, this, the sons and daughters of uh, the peasant workers who came here to, you know, toil in the fields are now, you know, pretty much in charge of the state. But there was a time when that's not how it was. This was definitely a territory and a colony. And the people, anybody that had any kind of power, they had some, one thing in common, and that was the color of their skin. Don't even kid yourselves. People forget, though. See, it's nice. People have forgotten how far. We've come so far. And we have so much further to go. But in the rest of the United States, you guys got a lot further to go than we do. Because at least over here, you know, don't kid yourself. There's as much prejudice in Hawaii as anywhere else, right? I'm not saying that, though, it's a utopian state. But at the same time, we have managed to, uh, you know, <laughs> to live together and eat together and have kids together and race and religion. I mean, like, there's story there. I remember being at a party and there was a story about um, the I can't remember whether it was the woman was white and the guy was black or the or the other way around. But the kids that were watching it and it was a big deal. And the kids that were watching it like, what's the point of this story? So what? <laughs> because you know, it's just no big deal here. There really isn't. That's one of the reasons why my mother stayed here, because when they saw my mom, who was very fair-skinned, and me together, there was no question that that was my baby. Over there on the mainland, back in Illinois and other places, people would ask her, oh, whose kid is that? Is that are you taking care of somebody else's kid? <laughs> and he used to piss her off. Anyhow, uh, the point being, though, that, that slot on the birth certificate, do not say Negro. You do not. You do not say Negro. <sighs> Okay, and now it's almost not fair, but I'm going to. I just have to. I'm going to do it in, a, in another video, though. Uh, it's because it's just, it's just, it's so easy now. I got I call up Obama supporters, and I'm like, so how about that Obama? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's I mean, like, so, or some derivative. I don't want to talk about. I want to. I don't it. They don't even want to hear. They don't want to say boo to me because they know, and I just rib them. Pretty cool, huh? They're spying on everybody. Huh? Not just. Verizon, it's everybody. Oh, we need it. We should trust it. Anyway, it, 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 like I said, it's almost not fair. E pluribus unum. Get out there and educate. Get out there. Try not to be too hard on the Obama supporters. They, a lot of them really were fooled. They really were just thinking that this guy was, was somehow different. And now, except for the most asleep, <laughs> ridiculous, staunch supporters, their eyes are opening to the fact that, yeah, it doesn't really matter if it's Republican or Democrat. We got one, one, one party in control, and now we, the people, are to be feared, and uh, you know we're we're the suspects before we've done anything. That should have become obvious when they made you start taking your shoes off just to travel, right? But like, what you thought it just ended there? You thought it just ended at the airport, and they weren't going to try and do more than that? You are a suspect. You are. We can't trust you. <laughs> Right? You might you might do something. You might pro anyway. That's the next video. E pluribus unum. Get out there. Educate. 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 And like I said, try not to be too smug. 